The luxury of self-driving cars is here. Well, almost. Although we've reached a point in time which we can let the cars do most of the driving themselves, we still need to be attentive to the road, and at least with cars like Tesla, who are responsible for pioneering this new wave of self-driving cars, alerts you to place your hands on the wheel every 30 seconds to a minute. But do you know how this wave came to be in the first place? The original pioneers of the tech that we use for self-driving cars today? That award belongs to Mercedes-Benz. The year was 1986. The very concept of self-driving and autonomous was a term left up to the imagination. Everybody thought it was impossible to create a fully or even semi-autonomous vehicle that could deliver you in one piece from point A to point B without various safety hazards in the way for both you, the driver, and others on the road. But not Mercedes-Benz. They wanted to try and achieve greatness with the very mindset and hopeful ambition that brought the first men to the moon less than 20 or so years before. They were willing to tackle this monumental challenge. Without going into all the details, in October of 1986, they launched a research project named the Program for European Traffic with Highest Efficiency and Unprecedented Safety, otherwise known as Prometheus. This explored the future of mobility, which attempted to seek out ways cars could avoid accidents on their own. Fast forward a few months and the engineers over at Mercedes took full advantage of then recent advancements in electronics. In the early phases of the project, Mercedes-Benz managed to achieve the highest level of intelligent vehicle with the Vision Information Tech Application Vehicle, or just Vita. The vehicle, which started out as a van by Mercedes, was capable of braking, accelerating, and steering without any input from the driver. The onboard computers relied on early auto image processing technology to analyze the road ahead and apply the brakes if they sensed a collision with another object was imminent. Sound familiar to something we have today? The system worked pretty well, however, there was one major catch. The hardware itself took up the entire space of the van and generated so much heat, Mercedes had to install massive dual air conditioners to keep it cool. It did what it was designed to do, but was ill-suited for anything resembling consumer market volume production with these catches. So the engineers at Mercedes got right back to work fine-tuning the technology. With the second iteration of Vita vehicles during the late 80s and early 90s, they took a giant leap into miniaturization. The technology that once took up the entire space of a van could now be fitted into the trunk of the new Mercedes S-Class line of cars. Why was this so significant, you may be asking? Well, this represented a major development in making the system now viable for consumer production should it receive the green light. The cameras used to detect everything also shrunk in size. Those were now installed behind the windscreen and rear window of the S-Class to enable a steering of the vehicle using more advanced auto image processing. Thanks to those electronic eyes, the onboard computer was always aware of what was going on around the vehicle. But another issue arose. While the prototypes could drive autonomously, they were unable to pinpoint their exact location, let alone follow directions from point A to B. The GPS was still largely used by the American Air Force and was uncommon in the hands of civilians or, especially, private companies. Storing those maps electronically would have required an immense amount of computing power. So, while sorting this issue out, the engineers got creative. They made special maps with the help of a publishing company to plot the data gathered by a sensor that detected the Earth's magnetic fields. Mercedes envisioned this primitive navigation system as a way for drivers to receive directions in cities. Unfortunately, as 1994 rolled around the corner, the company shut down the Prometheus project. However, they continued working on autonomous technology on their own. Brand officials demonstrated what they learned during the eight-year project by subjecting a research vehicle to its greatest and most challenging test yet. It was in October of 1994 when the vehicle covered more than 1,000 kilometers across Germany's Autobahn three-lane motorway in normal traffic at speeds of up to 130 kilometers per hour while demonstrating lane changes in both directions without requiring the slightest input from the driver behind the wheel. The test was an overall success, and Mercedes proved that autonomous tech could be viable to continue being funded and pave the way for a future free of collision and instead precision. While some analysts at the time predicted autonomous cars were right around the corner, cost, safety, and legal concerns prevented them from breaking into the mainstream. Many of those obstacles remain unsolved today. That's why we most likely won't see a completely autonomous car with Mercedes logo on the hood, or any car brand's badge for that matter, before at least the end of the 2010s. In conclusion, or should I say in retrospect, 
The Prometheus project from the 80s nonetheless demonstrated the roles computers could play in preventing an accident and, in that sense, its legacy still lives on today. Driving aids like pre-safe brake, which warn the driver if it senses a collision is about to happen and brakes if necessary, using carefully programmed machine learning algorithms and cruise control, trace their roots to the lessons learned during the eight-year program. It's safe to say that with Mercedes' persistence to continue working on autonomous technology at a time when most thought it wasn't even feasible to accomplish, successfully laid the technological foundation for what would become today's semi-autonomous and tomorrow's fully autonomous vehicles. Thanks for watching.